Have you ever wondered how teachers can make those awesome Google Slide interactive assignments and you're just wondering how you could do that in your own class? Or maybe you already are sending digital assignments to your students, but you just don't know how to do the next steps where kids are creating with technology and not just being a consumer. I'm Naomi Meredith. I am a former classroom teacher turned current K-5 STEM teacher, and I love helping teachers just like you navigate STEM and technology in their own classrooms with actionable steps, resources, and strategies that can help you with your kids. So I am going to share with you my five hacks of how to create interactive digital assignments in Google Slides. Now, when I first ever used Google Slides years ago, I was not a fan. I thought it was super odd and I just didn't understand how they worked and the purpose and all that. I was always all about PowerPoint. And so this Google thing was so weird for me. So over the years, I started experimenting and playing around with it, and now I am totally obsessed, and maybe you can get as obsessed as I can. I mean, that's a big feat, but I think you can get excited because with Google Slides, you can do so much more than you think, and the process of creating these assignments for your kids is actually not that hard. Once you get the hang of it, you get it down in these five steps. So the first thing to do when you are creating in Google Slides for assignments for your kids is to change the page of your size, or size of your page size of your page. Uh, so change the size of your page um, before you start creating. So uh, Google Slides has like their pre-formatted size. It's like that long, thing, you know what I'm talking about, but you want to change it so that it's the same size as a piece of copy paper. And you're probably wondering, why does this matter? Well, we all know we have those instances where we might need to print something, the Wi-Fi goes out, someone uh, was use, wasn't using technology the right way, they need a printed version. Sometimes some kids like having the printed version and they write something and then type it as they're getting more comfortable with uh, their skills. So having it the size of that fit, uh, paper um, of the copy paper really helps out and then you don't have to change it later on there like like I said this is really really important to start with um, you just go into the file page setup and then you have all those options as like landscape and all of that but if you click custom you can change the size that way okay so after you have changed the size you are going to think about what are the things on that assignment you do not want kids to delete or get rid of. So the goal is that the kids are moving things on top of all of that. So if you think about like a typical worksheet, now obviously you're not always just making worksheets, but think about a typical worksheet that you have like in a curriculum and you go make a copy on the photocopier. Those are the things that are glued down. The kids can't really get rid of it, of course, they could add stuff on top, but they, that's the things that are glued down. And what do you want the kids to fill in on top of it? So you're going to think about what will be my background, and you're going to glue down that background in Google Slides. So you're going to create that part first and then glue it down. So you insert it as an image in the background. So sometimes drawing this beforehand, like if you want to brainstorm, I do this too. Scratch it out on a piece of paper what you want the work assignment to look like, and then that will help you visualize the different layers. So once you've created that background, it's glued down, the kids can't delete any of those things, then you're gonna put those movable things on top. So these are the things that the students can interact with. So interacting can look a lot of different ways. It could be drag and drop questions. So maybe the questions are glued down in the background and then you have the little pieces that they move on top. Or maybe you have the background that's a tense frame and then you have the little counters that the kids move on top. It also can be text boxes. Often, um, in my opinion, a misconception is just to put a table and then kids type in the table. Well, the table grows and then it gets really long and awkward and the kids don't know where it went, especially with little kids. Like, where did it go? So if you glue down a table, like a graphic organizer, then put text boxes on top. So the text boxes can move and the kids can manipulate those, but the actual questions are still there and can't technically be deleted. So movable interactive things can be actual manipulatives or can be words. It also can be videos. So you can insert videos into Google Slides. So it could be your own videos that you have created and you have them in your Google Drive, or it could be videos that you have found from YouTube, understanding what 
what your school blocks and doesn't block. Um, and you can also add hyperlinks. Hyperlinks are links to other outside resources. So this could be a podcast episode. This could be three different websites you want the kids to access. So you're not maybe working on Google searching, which is a great skill to teach kids, but maybe that's not the goal for the lesson. You just want them to access those resources. So you have the links there and then the graphic organizer for them to fill out. So I think step three is the most exciting and the most fun because that's when you really get to pull in all of those fun interactive pieces for the kids to make it more engaging. So you have your page size changed, you made your background, and then you have put those movable pieces. You are almost there to share it with your kids. Before you share it with your kids, you wanna make a separate copy for the kids. So I usually have a main copy and I call it edit and then the title of the assignment. And this is where I do all the creating and it's a little messy. There might be slides that have the background and some that have the movable pieces. So when I mesh those together on the student version, they're saying the best thing. So I can pull those things. Um, so what I'll typically do is I'll just make a copy of my teacher one. I'll delete the slides that I don't need kids to use or to see, and then I'm ready to go. So from there, I know which version is the student version and then which one is the teacher version. So once I have that student version all saved, I will then share it in Google Classroom or the platform of your choice. So Google Classroom makes it super easy. Again, total fan. I have a whole video series on how to use Google Classroom, um, the three steps of what it is, how to assign it and all of that. So you can check that out if that's a platform your school uses. But you can assign Google Slides in other ways. So you can assign it in Seesaw. Um, there's a whole thing with that. You just have to think about what the movable pieces are because you'll have to add those within Seesaw separately. But you can also download Google Slides as PowerPoints. So again, thinking about those interactive pieces, for the most part, those almost always transfer over. So if you're not a Google Classroom school, still create in Google Slides because then you can share it with your teammates really easy and then download it as a PowerPoint and it'll work pretty much the same. So of course, you always want to check it out before you send it to kids. So when, um, you notice that you made that copy for the students. Once you have the copy for the students and share with them, you typically can't add other things in there. There are some hacks that way, but that way you're ready to go. They all have their own assignments. They can't get mess up your master copy. It is safe and they are on their way to be awesome digital creators. Now, I talk really fast because I get really passionate and excited about this um, because I think that Google Slides has so much potential for your classroom and not just as a presentation slide deck. Now, if you're someone you're like, whoa, that sounds great. I still don't know how to get started. Can you just sit down with me and show me all the steps? I totally get it. There, I have to have the same thing. When I'm learning new technology, I like having someone explore it with me. Well, you can have me with you. <laughs> I have broken down all of these five steps into all of the details as well. So I physically can show you, I can be right there with you and show you how to use all of the need to know tools in Google Slides, how to create different types of questions and all of the different sharing platforms that I am familiar with to get you on your journey faster so you don't have to search for random YouTube videos. Hey, you might find some of mine, but random YouTube videos, not sure what order they go in. I break it all down for you in my easy course. You will learn it in less than three hours, which is super quick, how to create in Google Slides and make those interactive assignments. So if you go to this link, I'll put it down below below as well, but the link is naomimeredith.com slash slides course, and you can see all of those videos in the order and how you can get started and be the guru of Google Slides in your classroom. Thank you so much for being here. I would love to chat with you more. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. It's contact Naomi Meredith at gmail.com or you can DM me and or you could do both. Uh, DM me on Instagram. It's at Naomi Meredith underscore. Thank you so much. I hope this helped you and let me know again if you have any questions and I will chat with you all soon.